Hey everyone. So I've got a, uh, I had a request in the comments. And somebody asked, could I do more uh, tips for players in the 800 to 1000 range? So I just looked through my chess.com friends and apologies if, if this is you, Timothy, JG2004. Um, I just looked for the first person I could find in that range, rated 876 here at Rapid, and I pulled up his uh, most recent loss. So I thought we'd go through that um, quite carefully and um, have a look at what's going on. Now, the first thing that jumps out to me, and I haven't seen this game, I don't know what happens at all, I don't know how it starts or whatever. All I know is that White wins, okay? Um, the first thing that jumps out to me is how quick these moves are being played, right? This is a 30-minute rapid game. Now, if you imagine that a longest chess game is 60 moves, then in a 30-minute game, that gives you 30 seconds per move, doesn't it? Right? Now here, black, look at black and, but black and white. I mean, the longest move I see played actually on the screen, 26 seconds by white, 23 seconds by white, 22 seconds by white. All right, black's longest move, what's that, 10? 10, 11, 16, 17 seconds. Okay, so black is not even using half of the time that he's got to make his moves. Okay, now the, how well you play chess is a combination of a number of factors. How well you understand the game, you know, do you recognize patterns, stuff like that your basic kind of IQ brain power, right? Um, and then combining that into how many, how much thinking do you put into each move? Because chess is all about one thing. It's about move selection, right? You get a move, they get a move. You get a move, they get a move. That's all you get in chess, okay? Now, how well you choose your moves um, affects the outcome of the game. Who wins? It's that simple. And then the sum total of your performance gives you your rating. Okay, now, um, if you are spending half of the time available, then you are only considering potentially half of the possible moves. And you are only thinking half as deep as you are capable of thinking. I mean, you really are that capable because you've got that much time. Right? You are allowed to take 30 seconds per move. And if you're taking on average 10, then you're only doing a third. Okay, so I'm going to leave the, the timings on the board here and, and we'll have a look. So we start with a three. Um, the Van Kruijs opening. Crease. It's a bit of an odd one because it allows black to grab the center, but then... And it's kind of like the mirror image of the French, you know, if you play e4, e6. Ha! Huh. And now black plays f5. Right, so here to me, the very first thing is, just if you don't, if in doubt, grab the centre, right? F5, it, F, the f-pawn is a problematic pawn because of this, okay? You've created a diagonal towards your king. The c-pawn is very different. If you move the c-pawn, you're allowing your queen out. You are controlling more squares by moving the c-pawn. However, the problem with the c-pawn is it doesn't do anything to help this bishop get out, get out into the board. And also, if you put the c-pawn on here, it stops this knight from coming out to its natural square where it can control the center. Okay. The f-pawn, however, you are not controlling any more squares. You're creating a weakness. So that's the first thing that jumps out to me. Knight f3. Solid. Knight f6. Solid. Okay. Now the good thing about this move is, as soon as you move Freddy, right? As soon as you move Freddy, you should try and get this knight behind it. Why? Because this knight controls particularly the h5 square. Right? This square. In case the queen has ideas about coming out and giving check, you say, no, no, lady. Oh, no, you don't. All right? Particularly if there's a knight here. This is a pattern you've got to remember, right? If there's a knight there and you just do something normal, right? Queen comes out, check, okay? And you think, ah, oh, that's okay, I can block it. Uh, no, it's if the knight's here, yeah? Or here. So you, you, and the queen comes out to here, you go, oh, I can block it. Then the knight takes the pawn from one of these two squares and you can't recapture because queen takes your rook. Anyway, 
Back to the fun. H3. That's again very slow. This is a very cagey kind of opening. Nobody has really staked claim. We've got this pawn claiming this square, this pawn claiming this square, and we've got we've got knights, but you know, what are what are all we've got three more pawns here that should be trying to compete for, for these centre, central squares here. And as well, there's no there's no bishops. We haven't got any bishop fianchettos, which are trying to control the central squares later on either on either side. And now g6. So, so okay. So what we've got here is a kind of a Leningrad Dutch, but playing the Leningrad Dutch against e e3 rather than the usual maybe d4 or c4. Yeah. So I'm expecting the bishop to come here. Okay, so this is now starting to take shape. I'm understanding it a little bit more. Another thing that you could be thinking about here as black is to fianchetto this bishop to look down this diagonal. This move is an odd one. It's preventing this knight from coming in this way, but you don't need to be thinking about preventing that at this point. And now d3. So everyone's playing cards very close to their chest, aren't they? Thank you. e5. However... There's a problem, because the pawn is not defended. So, knight to b6 first. So, what I would do here... How long do we spend on this move? 2.9 seconds. Come on, black. You've got 30 seconds. This is one-tenth of the time that you've got. You've got time to go... Um, if I drop this pawn here, is anything unpleasant going to happen to me? Is it defended on that square? Oh, yes. Maybe I better put it back. And think about, for example, this or this, and then I can play the pawn forward. Right? That didn't take ten seconds. Knight takes pawn. Of course, free stuff, and it's a central pawn. Now these pawns are worth a lot more than these guys. They are far more important than these guys. Right? Pawns go down in value as you go towards the edge of the board. At, certainly from the beginning of the game. Okay, we kick the knight away, knight simply retreats. Thank you very much. I've had my free pawn, and now I'll go back. But it's now it's black's turn. So here, here, what would I do? I would develop. I would think about getting my bishop out to one of these squares, and my knight out to here. Probably put my bishop on here, and then want to castle. Bishop g7, good. d4, now this is funky because he's already played d3 so it's it's like one of those fights where everyone's just going whoa, 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 whoa you, really you want some do you want some do you want some and no one's actually fighting they're just both actually scared to fight um, unless they're offered free stuff castles good bishop develops yes knight develops absolutely right so now I know Bishop here. Depends where the king's going to go. And we don't know yet. Knight out to c3. Okay, are we going to get a double fianchetto? We could now. Yes, indeed. So now the bishop's defending the knight in case this bishop wants to take, which would be a mistake. Bishop taking that knight would be a mistake. Because this is a good bishop, right? White has all these pawns on dark squares. This bishop has the freedom of the city, right? Can move between all these pawns. Um, this bishop is landlocked. The only square it can go to is back to where it came from. So you don't want to trade this bishop. Wow, really? Deep, look, Dave the D-pawn, White has made 11 moves and three of them have been the same bloody pawn. This is slow. We are really losing tempo here, and what we have is, as a result, one, two, three, four, five, six, because we castle, castling's worth two, six, four in development, right? Um, now, one of those issues is that the, the knight has jumped in, grabbed a free pawn, and returned. Okay, so that's taken two turns. Um, but also, Dave has been very slow off the mark, and it's black to move, right? So this knight's now gonna come in, that looks perfectly fine, and that looks okay as well. Means the queen's tied to that. Uh, in fact, I quite like this move because it means you've got two attackers on this pawn from there. 
So where do we go? Okay, we go to e4, e5, sorry, um, maybe offering a trade of knights, in which case we can capture with a pawn. The knight comes here. Oh, well spotted. Okay, so there's a potential fork on bishop, rook and queen there. So we need to do something about that. Now the knights can't do anything about that. And you can tell that quickly because the knights are on dark squares. This is a light square, so we're, and they're not guarding it now. Wherever they move, they're going to be looking at dark squares again because knights change color every time they jump. So knights can't do anything. The only piece that can really do anything is this bishop. So bishop c8 to guard that square because using a rook or a queen would not be much use because knight comes in if you take it pawn takes you just down material so oh no 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 this i think is missed you know so i'm expecting 96 96 again is going to win material it's also giving up a good knight but hey oh that's just the blood right 11 seconds, right? You've got 30 seconds per move. You've got to be doing the sanity check. Okay, yes, the queen's under attack. Okay, so looking at my opponent's pieces, I can't go there, 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 or there, or there, or there. You know, they're all the squares I can't go to. That took me two seconds, yeah? Okay, I'll go here then. Bang, right? You've got to look at the board. You've got to look at the squares that your opponent controls. Look at the clock, 28 minutes and 31 seconds, and we basically lose the game inside a minute and a half with 28 and a half minutes to go. And that's inexcusable. I don't, you don't be playing. If you wanna play like this, you should be playing five minute blitz, but don't, right? My advice is to improve at chess, play your 30 minute rapid, play your 15 plus 10 rapid, and use the bloody time that you've got on the clock. Because you've got to be think doing your best thinking. Okay, rook takes. Oh, and it's all, it's all going, it's all falling apart now. Right, now here, I would probably capture the knight straight away. Um, then white's got the option just to trade anyway. But this, this is forcing, because it attacks the queen, but... Okay, and we're really down. We're, down. we're basically down a whole queen. Whole queen behind. Um, notice this is hanging. So this, you know, even, even at very, very kind of sharp and critical positions like this, I will stop and I will goldfish the board. All right, just add these gold um, arrows to show what's defending what. What's attacking what? If you want to, you can put them in different colors by holding down your option keys and dragging with your right right mouse. Probably want to save this knight. Okay, but anyway, so we trade. Yeah, he's trading off. Pawn takes, okay. Now we've got a rook and two bishops against the queen and two rooks. That is a horrible situation to be in. Of course, the queen's coming after the, the bishop here and attacking the rook and attacking the pawn behind the bishop. Yeah, this is this is just horrible. So ba ba no, I'm not, I'm not going to go to the end of the game, right? Um, basically, what's gone on here is is a complete lack of uh, taking care, right? I know that Timothy is capable of spotting the threat to the queen if the queen moves there. It's just it's just laziness. It's just it's just not taking the time to say, okay, hover my queen there, which you can do online. You can, you can pick up a piece and you can say, well, if I move my piece here, what's my opponent going to do? And you hold on to it. And if you don't like it, put it back. Or if you, you know, want to be absolutely sure, drop it on your king and, because you can't move a piece onto your own king, right? Number of times I've, I've done that and then accidentally dropped a piece in the wrong place. But yeah, I mean, you know, we, we've got a number of issues, a number of issues in this game. First one, this pawn move simply moving a piece onto an undefended square that is attacked by an opponent, right? Inexcusable, yeah? 
And this is all decent, decent stuff, decent stuff, decent stuff, right? Fienketo, yeah, defend the knight. Right, now we have to move the knight. I would probably have moved here with two attackers on there. Right, but we move here. And now the knight comes in, and then what? This is a missed threat. Okay, why did my opponent make that move? My opponent made that move because he wants to come in here with a fork. It's an undefended square, right? What can address that? Only bishop c8. It was the only move. And from that point, everything falls apart. <laughs> so this move <clears throat> took 17 seconds. That's half the time you've got available. Half. Possibly even, you know, less than half. And, and you know, this is a game that was over in 31 moves with checkmate. Yeah, obviously, it's, it's going to happen. Okay, let's look at one more. I've lined up a couple. Uh, this is just over 1,000. And this is Inquisitor. 1968, new chess.com friend, playing somebody much higher rated, 1354, okay, um, but a 52 move game, so let's see how it goes, again, let's just have a quick look at the timings, this is a 10 minute game, so 10 minutes, divided by 60, you've got 10 seconds per move, on average, okay, and that's for a longish game, um, 10 seconds per move, and scanning down here, looking at white, 3, 2, 2, 2, 1, Three, eight, eight, nine. White doesn't spend ten seconds until move eleven. So let's let's have a look. So look at the quality of these moves. Okay, Karo Khan. D four. Karo Khan advance. Bishop out. Proposing a trade of bishops. This, you very often kind of see this in the London. Now, if bishop takes here. You've got queen takes, probably queen takes. Pawn takes is an option, but it's not very useful because this pawn's stuck behind this one, right? Now, sometimes capturing here is good because you've got scope to move forwards, right? A scope to move forwards. Let's say, you know, move forwards, bring this pawn out, right? But if bishop takes here, you don't want to take with this pawn. Because all you can do then is wait for your opponent to pawn. You haven't got any kind of pawn uh, options there. So queen takes. Good. Throw in a check. I don't know about this. I don't know. Because it, it just says, okay, well, I'll play bishop d2. And now your queen's got to move. Queen will probably move back to here and readdress that square. But then you've got like queen across or you've got b3. And quite honestly, black has achieved nothing at all. By throwing the queen out. Okay, well here's c3. c3 is okay. It means the bishop still defends that. Now what we're doing here is we're using a pawn to achieve what we need to do, whereas it could have arguably developed a piece. Now knight a3 is a possibility, but knight c3 is no longer an option. But this is this is not a bad situation. Remember the light square bishops are off the board, so there's no real chances of attacking on this diagonal very easily. Propose a trade of queens. Except knight on the rim. Okay, so now look at the situation. Black's got one piece out on the board on a bad square, and white has none. Uh, white has a arguably slightly stronger pawn structure and has control over this square, preventing this knight from coming out. Knight comes out to f3. Okay, so now we're kind of on equal footing. Pawn push, so locking down the position. Here, 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 here. And now you need to be thinking, well, what on earth are we going to do with our dark, dark square bishops? Because um, neither can penetrate this wall. So the only real kind of route, the only real passage around the board, is going to be like here, you know? These, these diagonals. So you really have to now stop and look at those and think, well, what is this guy going to do? You know, what is he going to do? So let's see. Now, this is move nine. Spent nine seconds on this move. Okay, Developing the knight. And obviously, because we've played c3, it can't go there. So, yeah, the knight could actually come around here before castling. That's the thought. Knight could also come to here, possibly, but probably not. Because the action area is going to be this way. The king's going that way, for sure. Okay, now we have a pawn break, c5. And I wouldn't worry too much about this, you know, if he wants to take recapture the pawn. 
Or even recapture with a knight and then put your other knight there. Knight here now hits the pawn. I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure about that. I think I'd have probably moved my knight around this way. Because we really have to get pressure against this corner of the board at some point. Now this is saying, I'm attacking your pawn, which happens to be defended twice. And it's also inviting the pawn just to come here. Improve its situation and force the knight back. But we have C takes. Now what do we do? Okay, so this, this was move 10. This was, okay, white took 7 seconds over this move. This move he took 20 seconds. So good to see you stopping and thinking. And we capture with this knight. Okay. But the knight doesn't have great prospects from here. In terms of forward motion towards the king, or where the king's going to go, which is here, knight can't go to any of these squares. So I'm thinking that something like this would actually be a better route for that knight around the board, rather than sitting there. But let's see how it works out. Knight now retreats to c7. Again, I mean, it can go here. It can't go there or there or there. So a4 would be a thought at this point in time, but possibly unnecessary, because if the knight does go there, then what's it got? All it can do is take out that knight. We retake with a pawn and, you know, we're okay. So castles, okay, nice move. Bishop comes out, okay, now, yeah, hmm. So now, this is, this point in the middle game is where you, you need to start looking at your pieces and say, okay, which are my good pieces, which are my bad pieces? And I, I'd say that, actually, arguably, both of these pieces are quite poor. This knight is not in a great position because it, it has no prospects going forward. Um, but, and likewise, this bishop's got problems because of the dark square pawns. Okay, so here, b4. This is a, yeah, this is a kind of a kind of a signature 1000 move, you know. Um, the, the bishop has announced its intention or the possibility of capturing the knight. You don't have to force the bishop's hand, right? Here, you could just say, okay, well, look, I'm going to develop my bishop. Then if he takes, I retake with the bishop, maybe, right? There's no need to use a pawn um, unless it's only the pawn that can do the job. Here, I would probably, I don't know. I don't know. Well, let's see what happens. Does the bishop take? No, the bishop just retreats. So what's the pawn move achieved? It's made a backwards pawn here, which might be difficult to defend later on. Okay, a4, and now this is a... Obviously, we're threatening to trap the bishop. A6 is played, and now the bishop comes out to E3, which you could have done in the first place without these pawn moves, right? Now, these pawn moves, they're moves. They are maybe, arguably, getting some space on there. But again, this is the action area. This is where you want to be focusing your forces. Okay, there's an undefended pawn here, right? So you want to be thinking about maybe getting a knight to there, something like that. Um, which isn't that easy. Knight, 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 like that, right? Um, also, actually, knight move here, trade of bishops, f takes e3, opens up options for your rook. So here, the other thing you might be thinking about as white is, what are my pawn breaks? And f is a very, very decent pawn break. That could really improve prospects for your pieces. If he takes f5, knight takes f5, you know. Knight out to here. Again, you can see because we played e5 on move, what, 3? Yeah, that knight couldn't move to its natural square. So again, it's had to take the slope, the long route round. Right? Now we hit the bishop for no reason whatsoever. It's just saying, go on then, bishop, do what you're going to do. And bishop's like, fine, okay, well. Now, how do we retake? Bish or pawn? I wouldn't retake with the knight. The bishop isn't too bad because then the bishop gets these two squares, yeah? Both looking at knights. <laughs> I'd take with the bishop. <clears throat> White takes with the knight, which doesn't move the knight anywhere towards here. Okay? And also, look, can't go there, can't go there, can't go there. Seems to be thinking about if my knight goes there, what's its future? Right? This bishop has fewer options now. These two squares were actually quite interesting for the bishop. Both defended by pawns, right? 
This one would be looking down towards the rook when, when black castles. So I'd have taken the fish. Don't really see much point in that move. Knight takes, maybe pawn takes, we'll see. At this point, I, th I think I'd play a four. Okay. But we have rook A to C1, defending the backwards pawn. And also noticing that if knight takes here and pawn takes, this knight will be hanging. Knight does take, pawn does take. Knight hangs. So it's only got one square in it. Either that will defend with king or rook. Actually, bear in mind, king, king d7 here is not a bad move at all. Reasons. You don't have to castle the king. Okay, King here also defends these three squares. Right, These three squares are key squares. They're penetration squares on the only open file on the board. Every other file on the board is closed because it's got a knight of, uh, sorry, a pawn of each colour right, on that file. Yeah? Look, completely closed. Close, 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 close. Yes, yeah, some of them have got breaks, options, right? And these. <laughs> However, this is the only open file. So you want to prevent major pieces, which is, in this case is rooks because the queens are off, from accessing your sensitive parts. And the seventh rank is very often a sensitive part because it, look, it's got four targets on there, four pawns. Seventh rank here is relatively sensitive. So I would say here, king d7, decent move, okay? At which point, white would probably want to think about doubling up rooks and then we're gonna have a, a real kind of, you know, Cold War arms race for the occupation of the C file. So anyway, knight moves. Hmm, okay. Interestingly, the knight still guards that square. Knight's kind of attacking this bishop defense. So the bishop's currently nursemaiding a, a backwards pawn. And we have f4, good, I like that move, I like it. And we have castles, right? Now this king is actually one of the more powerful pieces on the board, so I think this is a much better square for that king. Right? You don't have to be afraid, particularly this bishop's now quite quite bad. It's getting surrounded by its own pawns. Hope for, I want to see f5. Now what's that about? I don't this I don't get, because that pawn's defended, that knight's defended. Is he thinking about doubling up? And preventing these rooks from coming here, which is true, it would. Although knight can go back there. That's a confusing one, I don't get that. Okay, and now we have an instant challenge because he's he hasn't actually doubled up his rooks, rooks yet. Now he doubles trade and pawn takes. That's interesting. Hmm, so we don't have passed pawns, but we have, we've created an imbalance in pawns here. Rook to there, okay. And now the first thing I would be thinking about is probably activating my king. Rook B, why? I don't get this one. Okay, so, right, so we're kind of pinning the knight because that pawn's undefended, right? That's all I can think. Activates the king. See, this is the 1350 player now. Activates the king, good. King, G4. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know, it's because we've got... Right, this is all blocked off, so that's nothing's happening there. We've got, basically got three against three, both backed up with a king. Here we have got a bishop, though. Now, interesting thing now, at, the end, at this point in the game, what I would be wanting to do is, right, the major imbalance in the game is material's equal, right? White's got a bishop, black has a knight. So, if you've got a bishop and your opponent's got a knight, then what you should be aiming to do, or one idea, is to get rid of the pawns in the middle of the board. Trade them all off, if you can, right? Why the pawns in the middle of the board, Hunty? Well, I'll tell you for why. Bishops can cross the entire board in a single bound. Pew, pew, right? Which means that if you've got pawns on both sides of the board, yeah, threatening to march up the board and promote, a bishop can cover, I get you, bang, I get you, bang, pew, 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 right? Bishops can do that. They move in hyperspace, right? Knights are slow and sluggish horses. So knights are actually much better in close quarter fighting, okay? So if you've got like both kings in the middle of the board, you've got a cluster of pawns in the middle of the board, yeah? The knight is your best friend there. 
much more powerful than a bishop. Bishop wants space, so it can exercise its um, special powers. Simple. So here, I'd like to see f5 takes, takes, pushing, takes, 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 you know, that kind of stuff. Open things up for this guy. Right now, he's got problems because he's got five pawns on his own color. So this bishop is really hampered. Okay. Good. Take it. Okay. He didn't take it. Just pushing pawns up the board. Okay. Rook up here. Take the pawn. Don't. Oh, okay. Improve the king. King here. Pushing again. <laughs> now, White has managed to get all of his pawns, six of the buggers, onto the same colour square as his bishop. Which basically means that this bishop is about as useful as a pawn right now. Not brilliant. Okay, We've got to get rid of pawns. Now, here, if black plays this, your bishop is screwed. Because if black plays that, yeah, we've now got chuck a block stuck in the middle of the board. What does black do? Yeah, should have need to clear. And this is this is why these you know understanding these general ideas of the strength relative strengths and weaknesses of pieces is so important. Uh, white has now allowed black to gum up the middle of the board which is like great for a knight or better for I mean it's not great any in general but um, we, it's making life very hard for that bishop pushing another pawn right now if we have something like this it's more or less game over you know I would put black at plus one S seriously at that point <laughs> rook retreats rook comes over push please take it Yes! Thank you. Right, now at least we have an open file. Now, rook g1, 100%. Rook g1, stick your rook in there, okay? We want to quarantine this king. Please play rook g1. Get in. Good move, Inquisitor. I am the Inquisitor. Okay, and yeah! See? That's what I said. Rook here. How are you going to defend that pawn? Okay, now you're using an entire major piece to defend one stupid-ass pawn. Now, what would I be looking at? Bishop has to enter the game. Look at this. Okay? Has to get into the game somehow. Maybe even... I don't know. There's nothing else to go at, really. This is the problem. Black's managed to get most of his pawns on light squares, which means they're ghosted for this bishop. He can't, he can't even see them, right? So, bishop here... Get it to there, maybe take squares away from the king, throw in checks, bang, yeah? Okay, that's not bad, but this is better. You need to need to be getting in here. This is the point. Now, it's, that that's not good. That's not as good. Okay, now the knight's coming around, and now we see the true power of the knight. Okay, and now the knight's attacking this. See? Difference between a knight and a bishop? Knight can land on all 64 squares. Bishop can only land on 32. All right? And this pawn's going to fall. N now he thinks about it. Now you do this, huh? Okay, so we're going to come in here. But look. Pass pawn. All right? That will be decisive. Okay, attack the rook. Rook comes to here. Okay, okay, okay. Now drop the rook back. We need to prevent this pawn from... Good, good, good. Okay, we have time. Takes, takes, pushes here. That's fine. Oh, no, it's defended by the rook now. You can't take it now. No. Okay. Are you going to have to sack the rook? Okay, capture on person. Why don't we take this pawn on person? Take the pawn. Take the stupid pawn. Takes there. That's off. King takes. Check. It's a thought. Um, oh, no, no, no. And oh, you want to get your bishop on here. So it's looking at that pawn. This is your only hope. But we've sacked the exchange here. And now it's looking terrible. Okay, king b4. No. King b4. Check. They should have come to here because this drops a pawn. 
and it's all going to fall apart. Yeah, and we resign. Okay, actually quite close in the end, but interesting game, very interesting game. Um, yeah, I think you know there were some some weaker moves in all of that. On the whole, I think Inquisitor played, you know, not far off his opponent's level. But I think this key point at the end was to recognise the difference in the imbalance between the bishop and the knight. Yeah, um, you have to make the most of this bishop. So getting the bishop to, yeah. So this was good. Now at this point we have to recognise the vulnerability of this. So you know, one, two, three, and we've got a pass pawn. Okay, um, we got to. Now engage this bishop in the game. So one, two, and three. This is the key, key square I think for that bishop at this point in time. But um, yeah, very instructive game I thought, and uh, very useful. So, Quizzer, hope that's been useful for you. Um, hope both games have been helpful. Thanks for watching. See you later.